What's the difference between a Boston brace and modern scoliosis braces? When it comes to treating scoliosis, treating it with, with bracing has something that's been around for many, many years. And to understand the way, the way braces work and which brace is the best, we have to kind of first understand is what is scoliosis. Scoliosis is the unnatural sideways spinal curvature of, in the spine with rotation. So it's a spinal curve with rotation. And when they measure the scoliosis, it needs to be a minimum angle of 10 degrees or more measured by a Cobb angle analysis. When we have a 10 degree angle with rotation, that is defined as a scoliosis. We know for 100% sure that scoliosis isn't curable, meaning in most cases, we don't know what's causing the scoliosis because the majority of cases are something diagnosed as idiopathic scoliosis. But we know scoliosis is very highly treatable, meaning if you treat it properly, you can alter its natural course if it's left untreated. And the reason why is because scoliosis is progressive. It, it tends to worsen over time if it's left untreated. And the main times it tends to, to progress is number one, in adolescence, when kids go through this growth phase, curves can progress very rapidly during this stage because as they're growing, that curve that's there grows with them and the curve gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, some curves don't progress, but this is when they have the risk of progressing. So anytime you have a scoliosis and you're growing at this stage or this time, you have the most, the greatest chance for the curve to progress. It also progresses in the adult stage slowly over time, and, but however, it gains speed as the curve can get bigger and as you become older. So we see this late stage progression in, pages, in patients that are over 50 years of age and plus, and more likely at, at 60 or 70 or 80 years of age. So we see this rapid progression in the adolescent stage, risk of rapid progression in the adolescent stage, leveling off between like 20 and 40 to 50 years of age, and then the increase of the rate of progression towards the later end, later, later half of life or later late stage life. So the way scoliosis is treated is treated two main approaches. The first approach, which would be something that I call traditional treatment. Traditional treatment, and when I in the second approach is something that I call conservative approach. Another way of looking at it is traditional treatment tends to be a non-functional approach to scoliosis, and the conservative treatment tends to be a more functional approach to scoliosis. And that may be a better definition versus traditional and conservative. These treatment options have very different end goals and very different potential outcomes. And when we look at terms of what those end goals could be, is they tend to lead people either towards moving into a surgical outcome, meaning into traditional approach or a non-functional approach, where the conservative approach tries to lead people to a non-surgical outcome, where they're trying to maintain function of the spine and at the same time keep the curve as low as possible. When we look at braces, we understand braces are used to help treat scoliosis. And when we look at the types of braces that are involved there, traditional bracing is normally, uh, they're using something called a Boston brace. It's the most common brace used in the traditional method. And Boston braces are designed to work a very specific way. And this conservative or more modern bracing, we use more of like a scoli brace or something that we call corrective bracing. And corrective bracing is more functional because the goal, the way they're designed, is to try to improve the spinal curvature without, restore, without removing function, which we'll discuss in a second. So the Boston bracing works in very specifically that the design, number one, hasn't changed in years. Boston braces were initially designed to make bracing easier, not necessarily more effective. It was to free up time from the old style of, boss of bracing, which involved plaster casting and sculpting that plaster cast into something they would call a corrected position. And then they would build the brace off this sculpted plaster class, and that would be in a corrected position. Boston braces came about and they were more mass produced. And this more mass produced um, types of braces were, did not take this plaster casting, did not require sculpting in an opposite position, but it in, instead created a squeeze with a small relief. And this squeezing effect was easier to fit on a patient and it was easier to give a patient without having such much such involvement as plaster casting and sculpting. But as a result, it led to less effectiveness bracing, meaning the bracing really was a two-dimensional bracing system that required just squeezing. The, the number one goal of Boston braces isn't really 
to reduce the curve. The goal was just to try to slow down and stop progression. And because it had such a squeezing effect on the body, it can lead to something that I kind of saw when I was using Boston braces. They can lead to some weakness and atrophy in muscles because it was just limiting motion by squeezing, trying to stop progression. And because of this limited squeezing effect, as this person was growing and unfortunately worsening, the curve became, the brace became less and less comfortable. And therefore compliance issues became a very big problem with Boston braces because normally cases were worsening in the brace and the brace became harder and harder and harder to wear. So therefore, very simply, the Boston braces goals were just trying to slow progression. They weren't designed to reduce the curve, not designed to make, to make the posture better, just trying to slow down progression to get somebody in a brace quicker, more efficiently, not necessarily better results, and it was only really treating in two dimensions. Well, how does a corrective brace work or a scoli brace? Well, first of all, it's a much more modern dynamic design. There is no blueprint to designing it, meaning every brace is designed individually one one by one by one. We don't we don't have a pre-construction process. It's everyone is individually scanned and it's actually we're actually measuring to determine what that person needs. And additionally, the scoli brace or a corrective brace doesn't squeeze. It actually pushes the spine. And these push or these asymmetrical pushes actually push the spine into the corrected position. This pushing into a corrected position versus squeezing in the current position doesn't actually weaken the spine. What we're actually noticing is patients actually become stronger and leaner as a result of it. In addition, most patients that receive this type of scoli brace or corrective brace are also given a rehab program along with the bracing system to actually help, help the brace be more effective. And number three is that the end goal is never just trying to hold the curve where it is. The end goal is to reduce the curve on a structural level, actually change the geometry of the scoliosis so we have less curve when we had when we first started. In addition, it's to help to improve the patient's posture, improve what we see in the, in the mirror in terms of cosmetic approaches, you know, in terms of ribs or waist or shoulder symmetry. And since it's customized to suit that person, it tends to be much more comfortable. These, and it addresses the spine in a three-dimensional manner, meaning we're not just trying to squeeze it and hold it where it is, we're trying to derotate it, elongate it, and at the same time, unbend the scoliosis. Because of this, scoli this these corrective braces or these scoli braces, they have this corrective effect, but they become easier to wear as the spine becomes better. It's kind of like bracing on your teeth. If we just look at braces and scoli uh, uh, scoliosis braces and bracing on your teeth, is that nobody would go through bracing on their teeth if the very best outcome would be your teeth would be the same. Nobody would do it. Everybody wears braces on their teeth because the outcome is straighter teeth, better alignment. Well, it's the same thing when it comes to scoliosis braces. If patients have a hard time complying because when they wear scoliosis braces, the very best outcome, it's that hopefully it doesn't worsen to a, a surgical level where our braces actually reduce the curve and makes this patients actually appear better, curves are better, so it becomes very easily motivating. Also with the teeth braces, when you first put them on, they normally are very sore, they cause a lot of, they cause some discomfort, but the braces become easier and easier for the patient's teeth to tolerate because the teeth are actually getting straighter as opposed to getting more crooked. Well, it's also true when it comes to our scoli braces that when we first put them on, they apply a tremendous amount of pressure to actually reduce the curves, but the bracing becomes easier and easier and easier as the time goes by because the patient's spine is getting straighter. And that's what tends to lead to better compliance. Here at Scoli Subjection Center, I definitely favor the scoli brace. I definitely favor corrective braces to actually push the spine. I do not like Boston braces. I tried twice using Boston braces on a select group of patients to see if they could produce any kind of results. And every time I have, I've had it had a negative impact on my treatment. I had better results with no bracing. So therefore, if I'm gonna put a brace on a patient, I know it has to work because I believe a bad brace can actually create more negative results than positive. Because if you're in a brace for a long period of time and it's not designed to actually produce a corrective outcome, I believe it can stop any things that you're doing that can actually be producing a, uh, a good outcome for your spine. 
Conservative approaches value proactive treatment, meaning with the end goal, meaning being there, a reduction in your scoliosis and your curve is smaller. And this is what a functional approach looks like, where a limited approach or a non-functional approach or what I call traditional approach really reacts to a curve worsening. And the reaction normally increases your treatment invasiveness to where the most invasive treatment where it's rod fusion and surgery. So therefore, we act aggressively early to try to reduce the curve so proactively your spine remains functional and you remain healthier for the rest of your life. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.